Good morning and welcome to the Learning to Code channel on YouTube. Today I'm going to be solving some practice exercises for SQL. I bought a book called SQL Practice Exercises um, a couple days ago. It's a really good book, I really like it. Uh, it contains mainly a lot of exercises for SQL database administrators. It's using uh, Microsoft SQL Server for the for the syntax but uh, at, in the book is mentioned that you can actually get an ad, uh, an advanced version of the book with mysql uh, exercises as well as with um, uh, a new set of exercises so you can actually try to google that if you want uh, i'm going to be showing the the book right now so uh, you can actually get this book on the Amazon Kindle uh, bookstore. It's called SQL Practice Problems, as I said before. And it's from, I'm going to try to pronounce this. <coughs> uh, the book is from Sylvia Moestel Basilic. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, get uh, our setup ready here. <coughs> Let's go to the setup. And here is mentioned that okay, let's let's see the, here. In this section, I'm going to be installing Microsoft SQL Server 2017 Express Edition and SQL Server Management Management X Studio. I'm going to be skipping the second part, the SQL Server Management Studio. I already have data grid from the JetBrains guys, so. Uh, that's a pretty much uh, way better software. Uh, besides, I am actually able to manage other database systems besides SQL Server. So that's what I'm going to be using though. I recommend that you download that, uh, the SQL Server Management Studio from Microsoft. So, okay, let's move on. Okay, the first step is that I'm going to be installing Microsoft SQL Server 2017 Express Edition. We go to this website here. There we go. I'm going to be adding the link in the description of the video so you can follow along. And you can actually download the, the, the installer here. I already downloaded the installer. I didn't install it yet. But that's what we are going to be doing here right now. And as you can see here, this is the SQL Server 2017 Express Edition installer. Mm -hmm. It's in Spanish, so I'm going to be guiding you here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to choose the basic installation. I don't want to think too much about it. Uh, okay. The ESMX, um, my language is not compatible. I guess I'm, I'm going to be continuing with English then. Never mind. Yes. And let's read all this. Uh, I'm going to be confirming the installation directory. Install. It's going to be installing 283 megabytes. It's going pretty fast for what it is. And there we go. It's really go it's going really fast. Okay. So while we are waiting for the downloading of the files, I wonder if Okay, the download just finished. Now it's installing. Uh I really like it the book because uh I felt very boring. And Amazon is continually recommending me books. Uh, I try it out because you can actually download a, a, a demo of, of, of any book you want. And I really like it. And it was really, it was actually really cheap. So I just bought it. And, uh, and I was just uh, drinking some coffee and reading the book. And then I decided, hey, this is a, this, these are really good exercises. Not just for... Um, veteran database administrators, uh, but even for people that actually wants to learn how to do SQL databases. 
As you may know, SQL databases are uh, really important in, in every single um, uh, IT, IT field you want to make. You are going to be finding databases everywhere. And I believe that having databases skills, uh, database skills is really important actually. Uh, something happened. I wasn't able to install uh, SQL Server Setup. Uh, okay, I don't know what that is. I guess it didn't do anything. Oh, look at, uh, actually I think it did. Okay. And I just run with the first problem here. Let's get a good look at this. Uh, this is a, during the installation, I got this, uh, uh, an error during installation and it's called BS, I guess it's Visual Studio Shell installation has failed with exit code 1638. So Google, Google the, the, the error here, install an SQL server, here it is, you know, a stack exchange. And since here that this problem is because the SQL Server developer uh, and the Express Edition installer um, had some problems with the packaging here. Okay, so it says, I experienced this problem as well with SQL Server 2017 developer. And it appears to be just bad planning on the part of the SQL Server installation package people. The problem is that Visual Studio 2017 installs the Microsoft Visual C++ 2017 redistributable x86 and x74. And the SQL Server installation tries to install the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributables which it can't because the SQL Server installation doesn't allow you to install an older version with the newer version installed. This Microsoft support article presents the explanation of the problem and the recommended workarounds. So it's basically a Microsoft product with Microsoft product mistakes anyway. Uh, and, and this is a, a clear example of why uh, big enterprises don't really want to deal with uh, Windows servers or, or Microsoft SQL databases that much if they can avoid it, but never mind that. This is not the place to rant about it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, how to find, use the direct links. Uh, I guess I'm going to be doing the solution number two. I need to uninstall this and install SQL Server and then reinstall the redistributable. Okay, let's let's try that. Let's go to control panel, uninstall something. Uh, no. There we go. Let's uninstall this. Okay. Now let's close the installer. Let's try again. Basic, yes. And it should be working now, I guess, I hope. Looks like it doesn't need to download again. That's great. And this is a clear example of how to uh, never assume that the instructions on a book is going to, are going to just work in right out of the box. Most of the time you're going to be Googling um, the, some error code on, um, and you are going to need to put uh, good attention to it. I find myself spending way more time uh, dealing with these kind of problems that actually doing programming in my in, in my day-to-day -day job anyway. So, well, this is a clear example of that. I should be looking for uh, this again and download it. 
There we go. Uh, I guess it's this one here. Okay. And hey, it looks like it's actually working here. And the name of the instance is going to be SQL Express. The database is going to be master, okay. Here is the location of the server. Okay. Looks like uh, it's, it's doing fine right now. What's this? So I can copy the, okay. Let's paste. Let's copy this data, just in case. So, I guess that's it. Hey, looks like uh, I already got uh, the software running here. Let's try it out. Okay, it didn't do anything here. I'm not familiar with the actual console for SQL Express. It seems to be working right now. Okay. Ah, I need to type go to actually do something. Okay, so. Go databases, go. Uh, looks like there is no show. Okay, let's try the example one. The lab. Go. There we go. Seems to be working now. Okay, let's keep the connection string some, uh, somewhere around here. I'm going to be needing that. Uh, I guess. No. Here. This is customizing. Uh, I don't know. Never mind. I'm just going to close this. Uh, looks like we already fixed the problem here. I'm just going to reinstall the Visual C++ 2007 redistributable. And that's all for the setup, I guess. I must restore my computer. Okay, let's do that. and we are back looks like after restarting uh, i just check and this process is here let me show you again um, i got this application these new applications here these are similar to the ones i use at the job uh, this is called sql server 2017 configuration manager you use this application to check if the database process is actually running uh, I have a couple of um, processes here. Stop. I'm not going to start them yet, or maybe I will. I'm not not really sure if I can actually. Uh, never mind that. As long as I if I don't need them, I guess I'm just going to be fine. I guess. So the SQL Server process, and here is the name of the instance. This is very important. Uh, it is right here. It's actually running. So let's try to connect to the database now or to the server i'm going to be using jetbrains data grip it's a software i i currently use in my job it's really good i really recommend it uh, okay let's try to add a data source and in my case i'm going to be using microsoft sql server and here uh, since this is the first time I actually opening the application, it's asking me to download missing driver files. Let's do that. Let's download the JDBC driver. Okay, it's doing it. Uh, I guess here I should be uh, typing the SQL Express na uh, instance name here. I'm going to be skipping the database name. 
and here here is going to be the URL for my connection and here is the button to test the connection okay yes allow allow and what happened now the specified database user password combination is rejected okay I guess that's fine <coughs> I didn't set anyone so I wonder this is my this is my my connection string here I don't see a username here and the connection is this uh, is a trusted connection I guess this means that I don't require a natural username so here I want to disable this and try it out again use Windows domain authentication sometimes uh, this uh, provokes some uh, errors to be sent to the console in case you don't use Windows uh, domain uh, service as authentication here let us let me see here okay. let's try again disabling that and seems like it's not actually doing it uh, the testing the connection testing should be uh, pretty much quick uh, it shouldn't take uh, too much I wonder if I need to specify a username and password so let's check it out and we're back seems like uh, I just assume how this software should be installed uh, so after watching a video here about how to install SQL Server 2017 Express Edition uh, I see that uh, uh, the installation is not something so simple it's actually a very uh, complex and a very involved process so right now I am removing this the previous installation because I need to actually begin again so I need to restore the installation now so as you can see here this is why professionals don't really like SQL Server even to do something so simple as to install the, the software is a very uh, is it, it's, it's a very frustrating process it's not a streamlined and this is one of the reasons why people don't really like to work with this product here anymore okay so uh, I'm doing this because I am a, a, a masochist I guess but never mind that okay so I wonder if uh, this is already on install I still I can see here that everything is still installed okay so I did uninstall that okay oh, okay so the programs are going to still be visible in the list of programs okay okay so I need to close this okay let's close uh. no everything seems to be uh, still installed it seems like everything is uh, still installed so it didn't uninstall it I guess no let's do it manually because I don't think it's actually going to be working not even the, the uninstall process is a streamline and now I guess that I need to uninstall the 
from the previous step here. I need to install this to okay uh, anyway okay let's see I wonder if okay here is the installer again and according to the explanation video here I'm going to uh, link this video in the description in the description so let's see I need to use uh, custom yes okay uh, I guess this is fine I'm going to choose the the default uh, the default path for the installation I guess is downloading uh, uh, different files actually I don't have these files so let's wait for the installation to continue I guess as you can see here the, S the, the setup is taking me way more uh, way more time than expected so this series could be called actually uh, how to uh, install SQL Server 2017 Express Edition and as you can see it's a very involved process it's not simple welcome to Windows so whatever so here we are again with the installer and I, w uh, I don't remember I install, install the, the installation, installation file, file. And select, and select custom. custom. Okay, so here we are. We need to pick this one here. Okay, I guess I need to read this again. I set the terms. Uh, I wonder if I need to check that. Okay, I did that. What what happened there? I didn't get that. I guess. Okay, here we are. Windows firewall warning. I guess I'm going to be addressing that later. Uh, I think that's. Okay, here we are. I believe that in this section here, uh, he removes most of these things here that are not going to be used. Okay, database engine services is remaining and everything else. Okay, so I remove this. No machine learning anything. Uh, I click next. Client tools connectivity must be on. Yes, it is. And next, wait, 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 what did you do? Okay, next. And he just clicked next again, I guess. Okay, next. And everything is the same, next. Okay, what should I do there? It's not the same window. Uh, SQL browser, I guess, should I be automatic again? Okay, let's, let's try that. Uh, it's disabled. Automatic. There we go. Okay. Here is the step I, I miss. Here I need to create a new a new user and set a password, I guess. Okay, let's do that. Mix it mode. Enter my password. I'm going to be using one, two, three. And confirm password. One, two, three. There we go. What else do I need to do? 
Okay, looks like uh, uh, it's, everything is just fine. There we go. Uh, and we're not done yet. Uh, that's just the first part, just installing. Okay, let's wait for my installation to finish. And as you can see, just the setup, uh, the setup of the SQL Server is going to take a long time to do. Uh, but this just confirms my belief that learning to code, actually learning, not just uh, uh, because this guy already knows uh, the answer to how to do the st the thing I want to do. But the reality is that if you begin, uh, you start a job. Most of the time, you're going to be googling and looking for uh, other resources uh, just to learn how to do a simple thing. Just to, in my case, just the installation of the database engine is taking a long time, and you can see here that this is a very uh, sophisticated process. This is not simple. Uh, Microsoft Windows is um, is known to to have a very straightforward installation process for most of its software. If you install a, a video game, you just double click something and the video game begins the entire process. Uh, I don't know uh, who works in those video game companies, but Microsoft will be very wise to hire them to as a consultant, I guess, to help their own developers learn how to do a proper installation package because it is clear to me that the Microsoft developers for SQL Server don't know how to package uh, their, their own software. This is not, uh, it just doesn't look good to me, to be to be honest. I had seen open software, open software uh, that is actually way easier to install than this. You just type a, a single line on the command line on Linux and the package just do its own thing and, and everything is installed after that. You don't even need to restore anything. Uh, but here you can see that it's a very involved process. Okay, it seems like it's actually finishing. That was a little rant. I don't really like to be ranty because uh, it damaged my psyche, I guess. But never mind. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, I guess a, a full bar is not really a hundred percent here. Never mind. No, it just go. It just keep going. Uh, looks like uh, this this bar, this green bar just uh, it's just a lie. Okay. Seems like everything is fine. I guess and close. But we are not done yet. No. Oh, and by the way, uh, before continuing here, I should I should install the redistributable again. There we go. Successful. Okay, let's continue. That was simple. Okay, so I need to open the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Okay. There we go. And now what? Let's go to SQL Natit Client Configuration. And this must be enabled, I guess. Client Configuration. And using the 32-bit version. Why? I don't know. Uh, client Protocols. Uh, okay, it is enabled. Let's move to the SQL Server Network Configuration. Enable the TCP. Okay. Uh, SQL network configuration. I guess here. Oh, enable this. I guess any changes made will be safe. However, they will not take any effect until the services stop and restarted. Okay, never mind. Okay, just okay. It's enabled. I guess I need to restart the service. Uh, okay, double click, I guess. Uh, I need to define a port. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have a default port by default, so never mind. So I guess I double click this IP addresses, go to the bottom, 
uh, we are using the default port for SQL Server 14 okay any changes okay the same thing there we go so the default port is not actually default I need to actually set that manually and here he's restored in the service okay okay restored restored in the service there we go stopping service starting service there we go firewall configuration <laughs> this is just getting better and better okay okay that's simple enough i guess i'm going to be adding a an exception for the sql server in the network firewall Okay, advanced settings. Okay, uh, advanced settings. What now? Uh, inbound rules. New rule. Okay. Okay, now what? Ah, I'm going to be opening the port. That I just defined, yes. Okay, do it. A new port. Uh, TCP specify port, okay. 1433. I guess I get nets, okay. Nets. Allow. Uh, all uh, I didn't see all this here. Never mind. Uh, I guess that's it. Seems like that's it. I guess. Adding users. I guess here's where the installation of the the SQL Server management software is coming in. I'm not going to be using this, but I'm going to watch it anyway, just to see how it actually connects here. Okay, this is important, the user. SQL Server Authentication, System Administration, I guess, and the password, I guess, during installation, okay. So here, I'm going to be using my own software here, it's called DataGrip from JetBrains. And I hope that this actually works now. Okay. Uh, let's try it out again. Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, it's, it's doing something. I guess the port 1433, the default port. Uh, the instance is called SQL Express. Wait, what was that? Oh, look at this. Okay. No, use Windows Domain Authentication. No. Now, System Admin. And I use the password 123. Uh, no drivers, no driver files configure. Okay, let's switch to the latest. That's the connection. Okay, what uh, what happened? Did did this actually work? No, local for local host failed. Okay, so error connection. Looks like something didn't work. Hmm. This is running. Well, let me check and we'll re be right back. Okay, seems like I made a mistake before and I uh, restarted the SQL Server browser and I needed to actually restart this one here. So I restarted this and now seems to be working successfully. Let's try again, successful. 
Okay, so let's apply that and click OK. And here we are. So let me see if I can uh, make the font a little bigger for you. Let me see. So you can barely see what's written there. Let's fix that really quickly. Okay. Uh, let's use this one here. Maybe a 20. Uh, I wonder if that's enough. Maybe a 22. 22 seems fine. I wonder if I can uh, show databases here. Now, alter, backup, create, restore. No, there is no show databases here. I wonder how do you list databases on SQL Server? Yeah, that list of databases here. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it's a very involved process now. Okay. There we go. So here is the a list of the databases. Okay. It's a very involved process. I do work with several uh, database engines. And in MariaDB, for example, it's just as simple as typing this. You run this on MariaDB and you get a, uh, the same thing, at least as occurring databases on this server. Well, it seems like the setup is finished. Uh, it was uh, harder than I expected, but we are here now. So let's get with the books.